wild times. Extinct or alive. The Black Nape Pheasant Pigeon. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, this was very exciting. Um, uh, So, Black Nape Pheasant Pigeon, speaking of delicious looking birds, looks a bit like a turkey. (laughs) And uh, researchers from Pop, overall, researchers from Cornell Ornithology Lab, which Cornell Birds, you know, big, big bird place, American Bird Conservancy, went over to this tiny island, Ferguson Island. Well, it's actually a pretty big island, but this island in Papua New Guinea, Ferguson Island and place hundreds of trail cameras for two or three weeks, uh, hoping to find the black-naped pheasant pigeon, which is a ground-dwelling bird that hadn't been seen in 140 years. And before I even explain anything else, let's just watch the video of the moment that they find it, because the local guide, the local guide, classic. It's like when you found Fern. The locals were more excited than you were. I was pretty spazzy, but yeah. I know. Doka, Doka, Doka. What is this? It's it. It's it's owl. Isn't it owl? We can't tell. We can't tell them. We have to have them look at the post too. We get it. Oh man, this is the hip. Oh man, Eva. Oh my God. Oh man, this can you split back? <laughs> man, <laughs> it might be such a in. I can't believe it. God, Jordan, that's an owl. Wow, dude. So, owl is their local name, just so you know. So, when he goes, Oh, that's an owl, that's he's referring to the black nape pheasant pigeon. That's the local gotcha. name for them. 140 um, years, though. That's a yeah, long yeah, time. That's wild. Long time. Um, this is and, so, this is the, the actual video that he was looking at, isn't it? Yes. Yep. This is it. So it's just crazy, though, because this feels like one of those things where they just looked in a place where no one had looked. Yeah. Right, and as that, opposed to some unique tactic or some new groundbreaking tech, they just went to this island and looked with trail cameras and found it in three weeks. And that's one of those things that, like, I, I always say that when I do, like, you know, press pieces and stuff. I've, people don't ask me that much about this stuff any longer, unfortunately. But it's like, you just got to go, you know? It's like everybody goes, up, oh, it's gone, not going to look, you know, it's extinct. You just got to go. I, I, I know we were successful due to some, you know, weird tactics a handful of times, but other you just got to go. Like, there's no other way to say it. You know, they just went, they put out trail cameras, execute. Yeah. They looked for three weeks and then on the last day they, they got it, you know? And like, what more can you ask for? I'll be honest. Like, you know, I know a lot about these missing animals. I never even heard of the black nape pheasant pigeon before this. Um, but that's fine. You know, so what, that's not a big deal. It's an endemic ground dwelling bird to this one little Island. Um, and it's great that they found it now, you know, and they only found it by the way, because, they were talking to a bunch of villagers and one of the villagers were like, yeah, I've seen them, but not for a little while. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's a good sign. Like, at least you're still seeing them. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, it led to this. Try pitching something to a network where villagers say they've seen something. Right. Yeah. I they're know. like, oh, okay, cool. You're not yeah, going to find it. Totally. Can't pass. No, the um, like, the, 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 not just the cognitive dissonance, but like the, it's like the separation between people that control the media of wildlife and then the people that make it is so far and bridging that gap is so difficult because you're like, no, I think it's the one, it's one of the things like the BBC does so well, right? Mm -hmm. Because they actually understand when they make those natural history programs, I feel like they actually understand what people want to see. And I, I don't know if that's because BBC executives were once upon a time in the field and in working with the cameras and looking for the animals Versus like here in the U.S. with, you know, some of the, our networks where those people have literally never done those things or what it is. But like, right. it's just so disconnected. And you're like, look, here's this incredible thing, like this amazing crocodile species, this incredible bird, this unusual fish. And they're just like, well, but it's just a fish. Or it's like, you know, they just don't <laughs> get right. it. Like, they're just like, well, why? I don't care. It's a fish. And it's like, it's like this lack of education or this lack of understanding. And they're like, I don't think it's cool because I don't know anything about it. 
And you're right. like, well, that's not what makes something cool. You know, it's like just because you as an individual at a network doesn't know about it doesn't mean that it's not interesting to a mass audience. You know, it's a weird, a weird thing because we've we've been so heavy on thylacine on this show and on Extinctor Alive. We've yep. obviously had our thing with Neil Waters. <laughs> All of our bros. <laughs> oh, I have know info about on thylacine. that, by the way. But oh, nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say 90% of just people that you talk to have never heard of thylacine or Tasmanian tiger. Most people have no, they're like, nah, I don't I've know anything I've never about heard it. of it before I was on the show with you guys ever. Okay. It's and wild. 90% is- of people. Wild time. So if you want more behind the scenes stuff, stuff that we cannot show on YouTube, Darwin Awards, video breakdowns and reviews, check out the Patreon. It's full of hours and hours of incredible exclusive content, stuff that you guys are going to love. Swipe up, click the link, do the thing, come and hang out on Patreon. See you guys there.